Ever get a link that looks shady but might not be and you don't have time to spin up a sandbox so you do the risky click? Or maybe you need to spin up a clean but disposable Linux environment to test some code. Or maybe you're managing a remote access team and you need a secure streamlined way for them to connect. And of course you want all this to be free and accessible via a web browser. If you need any of those things, there's a cool open source project you need to know about called Chasm. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get Chasm set up and a few cool things you can do with it. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance our operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, Chasm is an open source project built on many other open source projects. It's really fascinating to me that they put all these different things together, such as Apache Guacamole for the streaming, VNC, SSH connection, packaged it all in the web browser, made it easy to install. And if you don't even want to install it, you can click on any of these and spin up a session, such as a Linux session like this and play with their demo online via the web browser, or spin up a Windows session and play around with a Windows connection. You can see the timer over here. When you spin these up, you get a few minutes of play, which is kind of neat. So you get about four minutes, five minutes, and then it deletes itself. Of course, once you load it yourself and self-host it, whether you put this in a cloud environment or your internal environment, uh, you can set the session time as long as you want. So let's show you how to get this installed. Now we're going to start with the requirements and it does support AMD64 and ARM, but of note, if you want to run this on something that is lower powered like a Raspberry Pi, I have not tested on it and I imagine experience wouldn't be as great because it seems to be taxing even on my faster VM, depending on what you're running. The browser is simple, but go beyond browser and start running full blown Linux operating systems, you're definitely going to tax the system a bit more. The minimum requirements are two cores and four gigs of RAM with 50 gig SSD. They do recommend SSD if you want these to spin up fast. So as I mentioned, you do need a system that's decent enough if you wanted to actually perform. Something else worth noting is that Chasm has a lot of great videos that are going to go much more detailed than I am in terms of how to set this up and detailed things like resource utilization. Also, we're going to be doing this as a single server installation, but if you have a larger scale install you want to do, that is actually supported where you can do a series of servers all tied together for setting up your workload and more enterprise level environments. But single server is probably where a lot of you would want to get started. Their install system is really simple. You have a curl command you run to grab the file, then you have a tar command to extract it, and then you do sudo bash chasm release install.sh. And I'm going to go ahead and add the password at the end and set my admin password. If you do not set an admin password, it will generate one at random. How fast it will install is going to depend on the speed of your system. When it gets to the end, it's going to give you passwords for everything that it set that were all randomly generated unless you specified them at the beginning as I did, such as the admin password. Go ahead and keep those for future admin needs. Now, Chasm sets up a self-signed certificate by default on port 443. So we went HTTPS, the IP address of the server you loaded Chasm on, and we're going to go ahead and bypass this and click through the self-signed certificate and let's log in. The first time you log in, it's admin at chasm.local and either the password you set on install or the admin password specified during install. And when you first log in as admin, it drops you onto the admin page. I would actually recommend going through here and going through and setting up the user you want to be admin and then getting rid of this admin. You want to keep this environment secure and set up any users as needed. The next thing you want to go is look at the workspaces. There aren't any, so let's go ahead and add some from the registry. And we'll go ahead and don't show this again when we close it, but this will just take us to the registry page, which is back under admin, workspaces, and then registry. And any of these will let you install with one click. Let's say if we want to install Chrome, we click Chrome, we click install, and now it will go ahead and add that to start installing it. It tells you how much space you have left. It's going to give you up here at the top the status of the install. And when we go over to the workspaces, we see Chrome, but we still have this little icon on there until it's done installing. If you want to remove any of them, you can go to the workspaces and you're able to edit them here. 
and you can edit or customize any of the features, how many cores are assigned to it, memory, et cetera, including how long each of these lasts. So everything's very customizable. Plus you can do things like file mapping, storage mapping, egress, which is a new feature they've added, which I have not done much testing with, and egress credentials. What egress does is lets you put a custom VPN setting in here so you can say that this goes under its own VPN whenever this system spins up. More on that in a moment, because I will show you how to do that also with a disposable Linux instance. Now I moved over to my production version of Chasm that I've got set up because I've got plenty of things installed here and I want to show you how it works. Right here's Chrome and let's go ahead and open up Chrome in a new tab. And what this is doing is bringing us within the browser, this Chrome browser. And it works just like a normal browser. It's not signed in. We can open up websites. So we can go to lawrencesystems.com. We can go to Google. Do whatever you want. You could even sign in and go through the whole process and set up sync and set this up to be your browser. We have this little menu on the side though. This lets us share the clipboard, printer redirection, download, upload, set the streaming quality because technically this is a stream of the Chrome browser working. You can even let the webcam be passed through. They have some advanced settings or we can go back and leave the session. And they also now have an option to install this as a PWA or progressive web app to get a little bit better of an experience. But let's show what happens when we close it and we'll leave, but we didn't dispose of it. That is running right here and it has 59 minutes before it expires. This is all very customizable. You can set different expirations for them, but it can be paused as in right now it's running in the background. So we could pause it if we want, or we can go back to it. Let's go ahead and resume this session. And it is right where we left off. Now, after the time expires for this, it'll automatically destroy the session, or we can go here bring out a load menu and uh, delete that session. So this is where that shady link would go. Whenever someone wants to send me or I'm uncertain of a link that I get, and I may want to try it in different browsers if I don't get the desired results, I have an Edge browser, a Firefox browser, and any of these will work and are completely sandboxed to be able to open up those shady links in. But what if I needed a Kali Linux desktop? How fast could it launch that? Well, kind of the same answer. We can immediately launch a Kali Linux desktop and I have this set to last six days and 23 hours by default. Once again, it's something customizable, but I do this so I can have this running and we'll set up just something running here. Well, top, there we go. It's got something running in the background and uh, we'll go ahead and close it. And we'll close this and you can see it'll even give me a preview of the desktop. It's running. We could pause it. We could stop it or we could delete it. And this will keep running in the background. So if you have some scripts you want to run or you wanted to get a little more in depth or maybe take apart that weird shady link that someone sent you, there's an entire desktop that I can go back to later and resume. Now, something else of interest is people who are using this internally for Teams it has the ability to share this desktop with other users. So you can actually have other people see what you're doing. It's actually a really nice training feature to be able to share these workspaces and have other people learn along with you. Now, besides these containers here, you can also build custom ones such as this SSH demo. So we're gonna click this and open it in a new tab and it will automatically log into this server that I have set up and I can run commands here. Now let's go back over to our Chasm workspace. Let's go ahead and destroy this, delete session and show you where that is. You go to admin, infrastructure, and we wanna look at servers. And we're gonna edit this one here, the SSH demo. Here's its name, SSH demo. Connection type. This is where you can do Chasm VNC, RDP, or standard VNC. So this is where you'd connect it to Windows if you have an RDP connection. You have the IP host name, and then you have the credentials, which I have as LTS, and then I have the password in here. And if you want to customize things, and let's go ahead and do this, such as the font size, there are options that you can customize further in here, and their documentation has that, as well as being able to put an SSH key in, so you can do an SSH key login along with a key passphrase. There's also the option to specify the user's SSH key. So when you set it up right here and you put a per user SSH key, each user can have their key in here. But we'll leave it like this and hit save. Let's go back to our workspace and relaunch it. And now you can see the font's a lot bigger. So there's a lot of customization that you can do with this. Now, the last thing I want to mention is doing egress over a VPN. That is something you can do with your firewall, and that's my preferred way to do it. So my firewall tells Chasm to always go out the VPN, but you can specify egress on a per container basis. So if we go over here to infrastructure and we do egress and we click add, you can 
build your OpenVPN, WireGuard, or custom egress provider. This allows you to put in credentials for a custom VPN or even a privacy VPN, put the username and password in there, and then you give this as an option so when you spawn a new container, it can choose to work off of the standard network or lock itself into an egress network. Now, the other approach to doing this is to load the Ubuntu Focal VPN out of the registry. So we're going to click this. This is a full Ubuntu desktop that lets us put OpenVPN, TailScale, or WireGuard as a VPN that it will wrap this container in. I've actually already got my OpenVPN config. I set up a privacy VPN. Then we're going to go ahead and throw a username and password in here. Launch our session. All right, now we see the session is connected. So let's go ahead and open up a browser. And it shows the IP address of the privacy VPN, and it thinks I'm in Anchorage, Alaska right now, which I am not. It's cold here in Detroit, but that's not where I'm at. This whole session now is full tunneled to the privacy VPN. So if I'm going to, once again, open up some shady links or do anything that I need to be disposable, I can have this session going right here. And then if we need to destroy it, we can go back over here and get rid of it. Now, my primary use case for Chasm is clicking shady links or figuring out those weird PDF.exe things that people keep sending me. Chasm is great for that because each one of these is a disposable container. So there's not much risk here, not zero, that this would somehow infect Chasm and become a problem. I say that because Chasm is building these instances and then they delete. The way someone could potentially hack Chasm is they would not only be after a browser hack, but then be trying to figure out how to do a VM or Docker escape. And and those are the highest of high bug bounties paid out to be able to escape a container and escape into a virtual machine. It seems pretty unlikely, especially because they give them such limited resources. It's not like you're spinning up a lot of resources. You're spinning up a browser or even a Linux desktop that doesn't necessarily know it's in a simple container. So the likelihood of malware escaping out of that is extremely, extremely low. But hey, take into consideration your threat model and what adversaries you think may be after you and determine if that's a risk you're willing to take. Now, where should Chasm live on your network if you're using it for shady things is an important question. You do not want it to be on your network where you have lots of other admin interfaces because, well, if the Chasm system sits in that same network, anytime you open up a browser just in general, it's going to be able to access those things. So maybe you want to put it on a separate network where it doesn't have access back, but you have access to it to be able to do these things because accessing it via a browser. And because it's essentially streaming that service back to you using the Apache Guacamole, there's not any risk of it coming out of the Apache Guacamole system and into your system. That's not even a scenario that seems plausible. But once again, I'll let you consider for your threat model if someone's figured out a pretty incredible way to take watching that type of stream and infect a browser because of some flaw. That'd be a pretty wild time. But hey, you decide for yourself on that. The final part is egressing through a VPN. I like the built-in feature. I like the Ubuntu focal VPN option that they have, but I also am simple and prefer that my firewall take that Chasm server and just send it out the VPN all the time. I've done tutorials on how to do this with Unify. I've done tutorials on how to do this with PFSense. You'll find them linked down below. But let me know what you think of Chasm. Is it cool? Do you think it's a neat project? Is it something you might find useful? Is it a good place to click those shady links or just when you want to test a browser? Maybe if you're even a web dev, this might make a lot of sense to be able to quickly spin up a browser that you know doesn't have any cache because it was destroyed only moments ago and created in seconds as a fresh new one for doing any type of testing. Let me know in the comments down below. Connect me over my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com, where we can have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And catch me at lawrencesystems.com to connect with whatever socials you'll find me on there. All right, and thanks. Lawrence Systems thanks our sponsors for their support.